Welcome back. We've got our series on listening, and yes, that is a pun. On listening meaning our series about listening and our series titled On Listening. We're talking about music, listening to music, all different things that we can pay attention to when listening to music. Hopefully, after watching some of these videos, you have a deeper understanding of music and you can pay attention, listen in a little more detail than you could before. Hey, I'm Isaac Shano Johnson. If you don't know me, I'm a musician, composer, producer, and I make videos about all that fun stuff. Music, music composition, music production. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to see videos like this in the future. Let's get into it. Today's topic is timbre. T-I-M-B-R-E. I know it looks like timber misspelled, but it's a French word, timbre. Now, timbre is kind of a little hard to describe, a little abstract. It is the specific sound of a specific instrument. So, we can talk about this with examples of timbral differences, meaning instruments that have different sounds. So let's take a listen. I got my keyboard here. Let's say we take uh, the song Happy Birthday is what I've been using for some of these, so that's what we're going to use. That's our song. That's an electric piano. If I change it to a different electric piano sound, it'll sound different, but I'll play the same melody, same notes, same rhythms. Let's hear it. Different sound, same melody, same notes. Go watch the videos on melody and rhythm if you haven't already. We can change that again. Let's say we want it to be an organ. Different sound again. And piano will have a different sound again. Okay, now all of those things are the same melody, same song, same rhythm, same notes, same key, everything, but the timbre is what's changing. The difference that you're hearing between all of those is what's called, is what we call timbre, right? Timbre is the differences in sounds between instruments. So the reason that these instruments sound different is a couple different things. It's because of what frequencies in the sound you're hearing, right? Because if I play this note on piano, you're not just hearing that pitch, which is C4. You're not just hearing that pitch. You're hearing also lots of other pitches in that note. If you want to learn more about this, it's called the Harmonic Series. Andrew Huang has a fantastic video about it. So I'm going to link that in a card. So go check out that video if you're a little more interested. But that's one of the reasons that makes different instruments sound different. Another thing is what frequencies you're hearing. So very related, but not necessarily the same thing, is... You can edit sounds electronically using something called an equalizer. And that changes the frequencies. Frequencies are basically just pitches, right? Different areas of the sound spectrum. And if I won't play this note and I want it to have more sounds from up here, I could use an EQ to make it sound that way and change it so that the sounds from up there are more apparent. Or I could do the same thing. Take this note and change it so that it sounds from down here come out a little bit more. That'll make it sound deeper and fuller. The other way will make it maybe sound a little more shrill, a little more harsh, a little thinner, tinnier, right? And that's how I can change the timbre of this one note, even though it's the same instrument, same note. It's often how people edit vocals. People will edit vocals to sound a certain way using something called an EQ to bring out certain frequencies, maybe turn some others down. And <clears throat> it can have a big effect on the music that you're listening to. So timbral differences is what you'd be listening for. Maybe that's different instruments. As we heard, organ, electric piano, different types of electric piano sound different from each other, right? You can listen for what instruments you're hearing in a song. That's a great way to listen to timbres. Listen for what instruments you're hearing. Maybe you have drums, bass, guitar, and a vocalist, kind of like a rock band or just a band, right? Yeah, you might have those instruments, those four different timbres. You might also have some other stuff. I don't know. But listen for different instruments. Maybe you're listening to an orchestra piece. 
in orchestra music, you'll have lots of different timbres because you have flutes, oboes, bassoons, clarinet, trumpet, French horn, trombone, tuba, maybe, and then percussion and strings. You'll have all these different timbres. Now, some instruments do sound more similar timbrally than other instruments. For example, the string family of instruments, which includes violin, viola, cello, and upright bass, or double, double bass, or contrabass, those kind of sound like a homogenous group. They sound a little more similar to each other than, for example, electric guitar and flute. A lot of instruments will sound similar because of how they make sound, right? Instruments that make sound in similar ways will sound different. That kind of is straightforward. That kind of makes sense, right? Taking, for example, strings, violin, viola, cello, double bass, you have a bow running across these strings and a fingerboard where you press down the notes. Those make sound in the same way. And if you take instruments that are similar to flute, flute, recorder, ocarina are all going to kind of sound similar too. Not exactly the same, but they're going to sound more similar than instruments outside of that family, right? If you know what a recorder, an ocarina, and a flute sound like, those sound more similar to each other than they all sound to a guitar because of how they make sound. An acoustic bass, an electric bass, an acoustic guitar and electric guitar are all going to sound similar because they all make sound in the same way. Now, when you're listening to a piece of music, listen for what timbres you're hearing. And now, what if you listen to electronic music? Oof. That's going to be a lot more difficult because the timbres are often created. They're made specifically for that song. The instruments that you're hearing are designed for that specific song. This is something that I think makes electronic music so cool. So in electronic music, you might have sounds that each of them is made specifically for that specific song, so they all sound unique. And they're not going to sound like, you know, an acoustic piano because they're designed to sound something sound like something else. And if you're listening to electronic music, what you can listen for is different changes within instruments of timbre, right? So there's an effect called a filter. I've got a video on this. You should check it out. And it basically changes the timbre of a sound. When you close it, it cuts out certain sounds. When you open it, it lets those sounds in. And as electronic musicians play music, as they write their songs, they'll often open up one of these filters as it progresses so that by the end you're hearing sounds that you actually weren't hearing at the beginning because it has this effect on it that's changing it, that's opening it up a little bit by the end. It's something that Dead Mouse does a lot. Porter Robinson does it a lot. Alice in Wonderland does it a lot. Flying Lotus uses filters all the time in their music. Lots of people use filters in their music. And <clears throat> it's something that you could pay attention to in different songs. In electronic music, it does get a little more complicated. I've got a video on how to design different synths that you might want to check out. But in electronic music, timbre is played with a lot more. You're going to have more varieties of timbre in electronic music because of what you can do with computers and music programs and DAWs and synthesizers. You can specifically change an instrument to sound a certain way. You, re you can design an instrument to sound the exact way that you want it to sound. And that's what electronic musicians often play with is timbre much more than other pieces of music because of the medium that they're using to make their music, right? Now, one thing that you could take another step further with in timbre is listen for if that timbre is ever played with, right? Does that timbre ever change? If you're hearing somebody play piano and they're playing it really softly, it's going to sound different, have a slightly different timbre than if they're playing really loud. Same thing with guitar and violin and flute and up upright bass and all of these different instruments, vocals included. You'll have different timbral differences based off of whether or not they're playing it loudly or quietly. In music, we call this dynamics. Dynamics are how loud or soft a note is. Some people will also describe them as intensity rather than being just loud versus soft because we have microphones now. If you haven't heard with microphones, you can turn up something that's maybe sung in reality really quietly without a microphone. It's quiet, but you can turn it up so that it's loud, right? So the intensity is really low, but the volume can be high. So you can think of it as volume. An example of a singer that does this is Billie Eilish. Billie Eilish will often sing really quietly, really softly right? Almost like she's whispering. 
And you can turn that up with volume controls and with microphones. So you can hear this really, really soft sounding voice that in a way kind of sounds unnatural because you'd never be able to hear that if you had other instruments on stage. But with microphones, you can hear it. And you can have the opposite. Somebody like Mariah Carey, who is belting a lot, right? She is really singing intensely, really singing loud, really singing loudly. She'll pull the microphone away from her face as she sings so that the volume stays the same. And so she doesn't overload the microphone. And you can sort of normalize those two, bring them to, together so that when you're listening to them in a song, they don't sound abnormally loud or quiet compared to everything else, but they sound about even. So you can listen for intensity, right? Intensity is slightly different than pure volume. Talking quietly sounds different, has a different timbre than yelling, right? And the difference is not just volume, but also timbre. If you had two recordings of somebody talking really quietly versus somebody yelling, they were the same decibel level, they were the same volume level, they were adjusted. The one that is quiet will sound less intense than the one that's loud. That's what you can listen for in some of your music is intensity in timbre dynamics, right? All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned something about music. If you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.